my friend. Great to see you again, buddy. Dave, good to see you too, man. Last time I saw you was for Richard Jewell, right? Yes, and you made me a star after that. Um, you told somebody, no, actually, we talked after that because you were talking about how Clint remembered, Clint Eastwood remembered me in the interview even when I walked out and we aired that and everybody at my station was like, and everybody watched was like, dude, you're like, you, you, they know, they, they know you. And I'm like, man, Paul's my buddy. Uh, so thanks. Love man. that. I, Too I appreciate sweet. Appreciate it. You, uh, you continue to bring it, my friend. Um, you know, you, you amaze me with your portrayals and how raw and authentic you can make a character be. And, and I seriously give you props for that. This is no exception. Um, when you took on this role, you know, did you know how intense it would get? And honestly, how intense did it get for you portraying this character? Yeah, I, I knew it would be intense and I knew that it would be difficult. I think I thought I was set up to succeed with the great screenplay, the great uh, crew and cast we had. And I, I didn't intend on it taking so much of a toll personally where I was just kind of emotionally exhausted. Um, we had we had COVID roll through and I got COVID at one point. We had a hurricane come through. We had to evacuate New Orleans. We had crew members shifting and new ones coming on. We had, uh, you know, I, I got sober in the middle of the shoot July of last year. It was a lot, man. Uh, but watching the show, I'm really grateful I got to partake because I think it's, it's like one of the best things I'll ever get to do. I'll always look back on this show with, with great pride, admiration, and respect for, for everybody I worked with. How do you cool down? after an intense scene? Um, it used to be making a drink and, you know, binge watching something on, on television, but, but now it's, you know, I, I'm able to go home to my, my wife and my son and playing with my son or giving him a bath and rocking him before he goes to bed. That kind of takes me out of Hollywood land and makes me realize this is what matters. This is why you do that stuff. It's not because you want to win a, a trophy for acting. It's not because you want to be invited to the cool kids party. It's because you need to provide for this boy and this woman. And uh, that kind of calms me down, but you know, what do I do for fun to blow off steam? I, I love watching uh, movies and television. I love making music. I, I have a, a hip hop EP that's dropping on July 8th on Spotify and Apple music. It's called murder for hire, but hire is spelled H I G H E R. And it's kind of like a foul-mouthed gospel hip-hop thing. It's uh, it's like a little piece of me in music. Dude, you're also on 106.1 KISS FM right now in uh, iHeartRadio, Dallas-Fort Worth. And uh, we're running this interview. I would love to speak with you at greater length. I'll hit you up on the Insta on that, dude. Seriously. Oh, man, please do. Yeah. I really want to talk about that. All right. We're, we're going to wrap with this. Uh, Taryn Edgerton, who I've known uh, over the years, same, same as I've known you. I want to know about the first time that you two met, because honestly, the chemistry is so authentic and real in this. And that is so important, yet it's hard to achieve. And it needed to be for a story like this. So I want to know about the first time you and Taryn met. Well, Taryn reached out to Sam Rockwell because they were friendly and had met previously. And he knew that me and Sam worked together. Yeah. And uh, Sam gave me Taryn's number, said, hit him up. He wants to chat with you before you guys work together. So Taryn didn't have my number saved in his phone. So I texted him and said, congrats, man. I heard we just got Kevin Spacey to play the detective and Louis CK to play your dad. I'm really excited about the cast that's shaping up. And Taryn freaked out and hit me back and was like, whose number is this? Is this a joke? I can't tell. And I said, no, it's Paul Hauser. How you doing, man? And uh, he, fl <laughs> he flipped out and he's like, I thought this was some producer, like giving me a real time casting update. Uh, so I immediately messed with him and, and, and poked fun and tried to lighten up the fact that we're about to go on this dark journey together. And most of our time spent together was laughing and talking about movies and doing karaoke in his kitchen and stuff. You know, it was, it was very social and very fun, but I would say four, four and a half months in, we were, we were pretty exhausted. We were spent, we were ready to shed the skin of those characters and, and kind of move on. So uh, it's been nice to see him now, and we're kind of celebrating the fact that we survived and we made a good piece of entertainment. 
Oh, you always give me the behind the scenes stuff like that. And I love those stories, dude. I'm going to hit you up on the music side and yeah. thank you. And I love catching up with you, my friend. Love calling you friend. You're amazing. Thanks for everything. And we'll talk real soon. Okay. Take care, friend. Give the best to your family for me. Yeah? I will, homie. Take care, brother. Peace.